I was on my knees and I was trying to pray this prayer of repentance they kept talking about. And so the next thing I know, I'm ha I have a, a, a recollection. And here comes this guy walking along and he's got one of these signs, like an Eat at Joe's type of sign, you know, front and back. And on the front it said, I'm a fool for Christ. And on the back it said, whose fool are you? Well, when I saw it at the time, I thought, oh, weird, religious, weirdo, you know, he went by. But here I am, all these years later, I'm kneeling on my friend's living room floor, I'm sobbing, I'm suddenly realized that I'm making a complete fool of myself, and I, and I remember that thing. I thought, that's it, that's it. I'm gonna be his fool, that's it. And I resolved in my heart at that moment that from that point out, I was going to do the foolish thing in the eyes of the world. I didn't know it was going to be the foolish thing in the eyes of the church, too. prayer that I've, I've thought through very carefully. I've, I've worked and rehearsed it for years, and it's, it's always stood me in good stead. It goes something like this, HELP! <laughs> and frankly, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. When it comes down to protecting my reputation and ministering to the need of a person, I go with ministering to the need of a person. The realization that we don't need any more disciples like us. We need some like Jesus. And I want to be a person who is completely consumed with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be like the Apostle Paul who said, Philippians 1.21, For to me, to live just means Christ. And if I should die, I would only gain more of him. I'm not at that place, but I want to get to that place. I want to get to the place of 1 Corinthians 9.23, where I do all things for the sake of the gospel, where I am consumed with passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. When I first went to Hong Kong, it, it, it was God's mercy. You know, sometimes people say, oh, Jackie, you know, it's, it's really a wonderful job you've done. How could you be in that awful place? They're completely wrong. They're completely wrong. I assure you, it's much, much harder not to do what God has made you for than to do it. It's no credit to you, to me, to have done what God has created for me. It's joy. It's my privilege. assuming all of you have prayed the prayer but have you committed to the church have you committed all your life and all your resources it's, well you don't understand I've got these problems I have bad dreams and I'm sick all the time and I get so how well do you have to be to bag groceries how well do you have to be to point to somebody for a seat I mean, you may be having all kinds of torturous circumstances. I haven't had a very good week. <laughs> but I would just as soon die up here doing this as lay at home. Amen. I don't believe about you, but I start crying every time I think that because to me, they, these aren't numbers. These aren't statistics. These are people. And these are people like yourself who have vision 
have a desire to serve Jesus and, and have a, a conviction that, that you're to go and you're to do this thing that you believe God's told you to do. Then uh, I was talking, not only getting from my appointment secretary the uh, information about uh, the, the thoughts that were sort of guiding and aiming my uh, invited point of participation in the conference. And there's always, uh, always one of the questions she asks wherever I speak is, what is the appropriate dress for the situation? She said, they said, casual. I said, Elaine, let me tell you something. I said, the vineyard is not casual. I said, casual is dressed up. I said, I'm going to have to do something about this. And so I, I said, because uh, I, I didn't have anything that would work. <laughs> so the first thing I did was, go, I thought I would go to a, a costume rental. You know? I said, I, I need a vineyard outfit. They dressed me up like a California grape. We, the church, all draw near to God as an end in itself. But I think some of us have, have looked for his hand and not his heart. And I want you to know that lovers, when they come together, seek each other's faces. And everything else is incidental to that. And if you love God, seek him with all your heart, soul, and mind. For that alone, not so that you can then have this or that or, you know what I mean? But just because you can have him, he's worthy of that. Let your house be filled with your glory, Lord. Let your house be filled with your glory, Lord. Let your house be filled with your praises, Lord. Let your house be filled with your praises, strip it all away and look critically how is it that the kingdom of God really advances and I spent a lot of time reflecting on this and came up with this amazing realization that has gripped me and might have some uh, impact on you and that is the kingdom of God when you strip it all away only advances one life at a time I just hang with me here for a minute people come to God one at a time I think at this point in my life, the highest goal in my life is to walk the streets of heaven worshiping God, only to be interrupted by people coming up to me and saying, Todd, thank you for announcing the good news of the gospel to me. I am a child of the Reformation, as is each one of you, and we believe that God has democratized his word by putting Bibles in the hands of every single one of us. And God wants to speak through you as a gospel preacher to your people. God can do that. It's our privilege. It's our inheritance. But, but I was thinking, you know, he no longer has to say, I'm just a fat man with freckles trying to get to heaven. That guy made it. John finished his work on this earth and now he's going home. And I, I believe with all my heart if John were here tonight, he'd say to us, the way that you can honor my memory is by carrying on my vision and doing the things, doing the stuff that I've taught you to do. Amen.
I got a hold of an interesting statistic, and it, went, it goes like this, that 90% of pastors, when surveyed and interviewed, believe that the purpose of the local church is to fulfill the Great Commission. How many of you would agree with some statement like that? I think we would affirm that. But when that's another group of people were asked a question that weren't pastors, just people attending churches, 80% of them said the purpose of the local church is to meet their need. And when you put those things together, you see that we got a little bit of a problem. Because people come to our churches wanting us to give them what they need, and yet we feel that we're supposed to reach the community, and we never get to the community sometimes. Because we're battling a whole ideology of what people expect from church, from you. And I think at the end of the day, we have a decision to make. Are people going to get what they want, or is God going to get what he wants? So all I really want to do is to ask the age-old question that Paul said to the Romans, what does the scripture say? What does the scripture say about our calling, about our ministry, about our marriages, about our families, about what challenges and perplexes us as pastors, but also what thrills us the most? And only by meditating on the scriptures, only by following what they say, only by keeping very close to their author, can we hope to be prosperous in the fullest sense and successful in the profoundest way in days which are difficult for pastors amid pressures which grow greater and greater all the time. What this world needs to see and what your neighbors and friends and family and the people in your church and the people in your community need to see is that there is a real, radical, definable difference of belonging to Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ in some measure is here right now in your face. The Son of God has come incarnate in the life of his church and it's real and it's happening right now. And again, Jesus gives us the agenda in his statement when he says this, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the source of life, and I am the model of life. If you want to know what life looks like, then look to me. If you want to receive life, look to me. Our message is singular. Our message is Jesus as the source of life for a postmodern world.